I watched the film today. I thought it was so sweet and profound and lovely. It was really charming. Uh, oh, um, so I mean, fair. I mean, tonally, it's really, um, it's really accomplished. I mean, there's a kind of lightness to the movie, but it's about grief. It's quite a profound story, really, uh, running through it. Is that something that all kind of came through in the script when you when you first sort of got that through through the post? Absolutely, yeah. I think the the levity, um, yeah, it was all kind of there. Um, Little Miss Sunshine was kind of a, a guiding light for us. Um, I, I think I think that's what that's what we went with. Yeah, no, I could definitely get. I can you can see that in there. I mean, but when you when you make a film like that, then where the kind of tonally it has to be quite spot on, and it's quite a tough line to kind of walk. How much trust uh, in the director do you have to put? Is it one of those situations where you just have to make the film and just go right? Fingers crossed you get oh, it. Yeah, I, I honestly I think that's most of the time. That's one of the scarier parts about being an actor is just trusting, just trusting the director. You just gotta trust him. Kira is not difficult to trust. But Kira, Kira is a wonderful director and an incredible actor. Um, so she was really easy to trust. Yeah. Have you ever, because I mean, obviously you're starting to work with some brilliant filmmakers now. I mean, so quite an quite a incredible collection of those you've kind of collaborated with. Have you ever kind of thought about maybe one day stepping behind the lens and getting involved in the kind of behind the scenes stuff? Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, it's kind of twofold. On one hand, I'm watching these guys and being like, man, I would love to do that. It's what a, what a brilliant position to be in and add bringing the story to life and all of the different creative things that you get to do. And I love people. I love interacting with people. I love um, managing people uh, and directing. I mean, that does all of the things that I love. Um, so that's on one hand. On the other hand, it's made me realize how much more I need to learn before I ever do do that um because I, I i mean these guys are i mean akira has uh, i think 40 years of experience behind or uh, in front of the camera i mean the things that you learn the things that are second nature to her are incredible i mean just finding her light, lighting an actor, speaking to an actor, respecting the actor's time, their story, their integrity, the note, like everything is so seamless. Uh, Kenneth Branagh, who I recently worked with, um, is also an actor and, uh, you know, runs his set completely different to anything you've ever seen. Um, and then Steven Spielberg is just knows how to do every single job on the set. Like, I think, I'm pretty sure he knows like what brand of screws they use to assemble like, <laughs> like most of the equipment. Like, um, and so I was just like, I, 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 I gotta, it's gonna, it might be a minute <laughs> before, I, before I'm confident enough to step behind. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for asking. <laughs> I don't know what I just quickly I mean we'll get back on obviously to, to Space Oddity but you mentioned Spielberg I mean I just wanted to know because I've always he's got to a point where he is he's almost like kind of cinematic royalty to a different kind of degree I just wondered when you're on a set with someone like Spielberg is there a sense from everyone around especially kind of young actors and people you know sort of people kind of still on the rise in the industry where you're all just thinking shit this is a Steven Spielberg set and just watching him constantly thinking that's Steven Spielberg, or do you kind of have to drop that kind of thing and then just treat him more like any filmmaker? In, in, in... He's both, he's both, he's, it's, it's, he's both. Um, you know, I think it, it came in waves. Uh, I remember a time, you know, I, we were in the audition, we were in one of the final rounds of the auditions and we were dancing and he came later as we were already uh, auditioning and you know, he's wearing his jeans and his windbreaker, and his baseball cap, and he just comes in on the waves, just like, ah, you know, I'm here. <laughs> and, and and instantly, like, there was just nothing. There was just no anything. Uh, just like a kid in a candy store. And he pulls out his camera and flips it open and, like, gets on the ground, is on his side, and starts shooting his film immediately. In the audition, he starts shooting his film. Um, and I think that's it for him. I think, you know, he just came out with Fablemans, which is, you know, kind of a love letter to his own childhood and to filmmaking. And I like that, that is him, that it really is him. He is kind of now what we know as filmmaking. And I remember we were rehearsing um, 
and he was talking about this thing and you're going to swing off this thing like that one scene in indiana jones and we we're like oh yeah like that one scene in indiana jones and then we we're like right like that because you shot that scene because that scene was your idea that um totally detailed my childhood uh great yeah right and so then you realize you know again who you're talking to but um it's not all the time no i mean talking of legends i mean there was a thing, there's a thing we i'm sure you must have heard of it as well the six degrees of kevin bacon where everyone in the world can be connected to kevin bacon uh well you've jumped oh, yeah oh, I was going to say, you jumped right to the head of Q. He's played your dad. So, I mean, how how was it working with Kevin on this? Because he's such a, I mean, he's one of, again, you're talking about people's childhood. I mean, when I was a kid, Kevin Bacon was in everything. So it was yeah. uh, it's been incredible to work with an actor like that. Yeah, I think, like, he's such an, like, a capital A artist. Um, I don't know. I get You get the sense that there could be absolutely no one there. And he'd be doing the same thing <laughs> yeah. or like two people there and he'd be doing the same thing um i hope that speaks to it um in a, in a better way than just like telling everyone oh he's a great actor and he's a great guy and everything like yeah, duh um but yeah i th i th really think like with his music as well um i had to see his band perform and i really i think everything he does really just comes from a very very strong and very very gentle place and he i think he really embodied mm. that farm yeah i really felt like he he connected to it I don't know, sounds really geeky when i talk about it but it's the truth and, and i think it takes it takes someone like him to do that and to kind of commit to it in that way and that's quintessentially him you mentioned him being, yeah you, you mentioned him being gentle well, that's a word i would probably kind of describe to use the to character of alex as well i was wondering when you play a role like alex who has quite a blissful outlook on the world does it rub off at all on you as a as a as a person as kyle uh when play someone like uh alex um yeah i think i think uh gosh it's, it's like anything really you you are what you practice almost. So if you spend two months kind of behaving a certain way, you're gonna, ideally you can take the good parts with you. Um, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think his sort of depth, kind of his, his meaning, his, um, the, the meaning he attributes to things and, and family and uh, I, my industry is very chaotic. Alex's life is, is much smaller and, and contained. And so that was wonderful uh, to think about a life that kind of happens in this container. Um, and also when tragedy happens in that container, it's just such a much, it's a gigantic impact. Um, rather than if you're constantly flitting around and running away and things like that. I mean, it'd be the, the losing a, a loved one is huge no matter what um but there's something to that there's something to like a just having a container a small town where everyone knows each other flower farm and everyone's kind of together and compressed and um there's something really beautiful about that that i hope i took from at least the values of it do you share a fascination in in space at all i find it completely overwhelming knowing how small and insignificant we are but is it, is it something you've ever kind of had in any kind of interest in as a kid and as, as an adult i love it i love it um i don't know much about it um i don't i don't study it but i love contemplating it um i think it's really really wonderful and i think it's a wonderful thing to think about um directionless specifically like we associate success with uh up down is bad and up is good and forward is is you know that's progress that's backsliding like that's you want to get rid of that and go towards that and it was like you realize we're in outer space where there are literally no directions like it's like we're on a there is no up or down and there is no forward or backward like that's just there i'm like it you know it's great because then when people are like you need to do this and like you actually don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> like you got it you got to climb i'm like where 
<laughs> like, like break that down for me because you know <laughs> you kind of zoom out like it's just really important like is it i don't know <laughs> I mean, he's obviously kind of dreams of being an astronaut i mean i, I was actually cleaning out my old bedroom at my mom and dad's house recently and i found a kind of book that i wrote when i was about eight years old and it said like yeah. what i'm gonna be when i grow up and i said i wanted to be a a footballer as in like soccer player who scores a goal in the world right. cup final. now needless to say didn't happen for me, but it's okay. But what was your what would what was what was eight year old Kyle kind of writing about? Was was it an actor? Was it are you fulfilling your childhood dreams, or did you want to be an astronaut or anything like that? I remember I wanted to be a tiger. Yeah. Um, you might struggle with that like, one. <laughs> God, you you can't be a tiger, and I was like, oh, man. and so I wanted to be a zookeeper. Yeah, animals animals were my thing, still my thing, still might want to be a zookeeper um <laughs> but uh yeah i think that was that was it for me um and i remember uh wanting to be the the guy in the dos Equis commercial <laughs> i was like that guy that guy looks like he has fun i'd like to be the dos Equis guy They're like god it's not a real person it's like ah whatever well, I mean, look, if you were to be in a, I don't know, like an adaptation of the uh, of um, the Jungle Book, you could play a tiger. You're in one of the only jobs in the world where being a tiger is actually a possibility. You just blew my mind. <laughs> you just blew my mind. Oh my God, you're right. Wow. That's going on the Google list, man. That's done. That is done. I'm going to figure that out. Yeah. I can be a tiger. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you for that gift. Thank okay. you. I cannot believe I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've literally watched I've watched the adaptations of the Andy Circus, man. Yeah. Oh. Guy's a genius. <laughs> yeah. 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 But talking of um of space, and how's this for a segue, by the way? But I know you're gonna you're is it you're attached to the mass of the universe. Is that how excited are you to get started on on that? Super excited. I uh I actually can't talk about oh. it. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I, 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 very I, it was more just very recently. They were like, you actually can't say anything about this at all. And here we are. And yeah. can now say nothing about it. Well, at, well, at least it keeps up the secrecy, I suppose. But um, but you did. I guess. Yeah, they're building tension or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I know one thing you can talk about because you already mentioned it is obviously you did work with Kenneth Branagh. How how was the experience being on a on, on a shoot like that? I mean, he's such. A, I mean, obviously as a Brit, I mean he's a kind of um, on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's amazing is that the hype is real. Uh, he just how he how he speaks the the you know I'm, I'm director actor all of it amazing. But oh, I mean I'm so impressed with just how he addresses people how he talks to people, how he gives instruction, um, the care, uh, the deliberate nature of it, the, the you know, repeating myself, the intention of it, um, just so specific. There's, there's no one on that set more prepared than he is. There's no one. He knows your part inside and out, backwards and forwards. And, and yet, when you step on set and you make your choices and he comes to kind of like, he doesn't tell you to do really anything different he just kind of talks about it with you and then he'll come up with an idea that's so much better than anything like i'd done months of homework and it was like this is since this is infinitely better than anything i said that of course yeah no i want to do that and but he'll he'll give it to you like how oh, you know there's there's this thing but i don't want to mess with your choice and you're like no mess with my choice like you're kind of messed with my choice please like like i'll will be your i'll say what you tell me how to say it like i'll do it it's gonna be better um and i just but yeah so i kind of i kind of felt like i was just trying to absorb everything I, I could from him and I mean an incredible cast as well uh the set's incredible he's incredible um I was just like please whatever you have just like get into my brain can I just absorb more of whatever it is you've got going on he's a knight he's an he's a knight that's what you know we don't have that in America I'm there I'm like I don't why am I here dude why'd you hire me you're a you could have done my part. You didn't need to hire, anyways. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so my, my, my final question is, I mean, just some of the names we've sort of uh, mentioned in this interview. I mean, we've spoken about Steven um, Spielberg, Kenneth Branagh. I mean, we're talking about properties like Master of the Universe. I mean, from the outside, this feels like a really exciting time in, in your career. Does it feel like that to you? Or is it just one of those things you can't really appreciate from the inside? Yeah. I mean, I definitely appreciate it, but those are also like, I worked with Kenneth for three months. I worked with uh, Steven for, but also like a lot of people and Steven for six months in 2019. Um, you know, this was three months last year. Space Oddity was two months in 2021. Um, and so they're, they're really impactful portions of my life. Um, and I like talking about them because I then get to remember them, but it's not the majority of my life. They're, they're uh, kind of small things. So I love them and I appreciate them as, as memories and they hold their significance. But, you know, I still do laundry and I still pick up the next uh, script and I have to read it and I do, do the same thing over and over again, you know. So it's... It's very exciting when you lump them all together, um, but I think there's ample ample separation. And I, I wanted to say that instead of just saying, "Nah, man, that's just my life. That's my regular day." But like, but it's actually it's actually very regular existence. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? On IMDb, they are all lumped together, but in your life, they're yeah, you know, they're, no. yeah, they're pretty, pretty far apart. I went and did this thing. I visited my family. I, you know, hung out. I got really, really bored for three months and decided to go to New York. And you know, <laughs> I, like, oh, this, was depressed. Thought my career was going nowhere. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a failure. And then you go to work with Kenneth Branagh, and you're like, oh, I guess I'm not. And you're like, well, I probably shouldn't relate success to this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just as, as, as strange and boring and as confused as anyone. Well, on that lovely note, <laughs> thanks so much for speaking to me today, Carl, and best of luck with what you've got coming up, and I hope you find your tiger eventually. Oh, gosh, thank you. I'm so excited. That made my day. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to being a tiger again. <laughs> um, awesome. right, man. Great day. Uh, thanks so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Is. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.